crop insurance is, is our number one goal in a, a new farm bill. We need to keep that crop insurance the way we have it. We have a good crop insurance program right now. It's essential for farmers as they do their risk management programs. It's also essential to our banking industry. So number one there, uh, safety net priorities include strengthening the ARC and PLC programs and uh, advocating for a mandatory base update. You know, I say uh, you can have a fence line and a cornfield on both sides of it. One of them's eligible for farm safety net programs, the other isn't, and it's based solely on when they're brought into production. And how that's probably going to mean a change in finances and the cost of the farm bill. And I think that's going to be a pushback from uh, the Congress. Uh, some of the programs do require additional funding. A mandatory base update has been scored by the CBO, and it does provide funding. So uh, that one's a possible. Okay. All right. Any other, any other farm bill issues that uh, you're looking at? Well, it, trade is always important and voluntary conservation programs too. So uh, a lot of, you know, 12, 11, 12 different titles to that farm bill, it covers a lot of ground. Wally said the trade conflict with Mexico may be coming to a head. Well, that, that USMCA is a complicated uh, agreement with a lot of provisions as to how disputes are settled. So they need to follow the rules that are in that agreement, and it's going to take a little bit of time. You know, the U.S. Trade Representative's Office has named the dispute settlement panel's members, so they're in place and they're at work. And we're hopeful that by spring of 2024, we can get this resolved. Well, that's not far away. Uh, does Mexico, do they know that that's our goal? Well, they should. We've uh, certainly been uh, pushing that as, as our goal. Okay. Is, 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 this, is it really going to mean extra uh, money for the corn, uh, uh, for corn income? Uh, we're getting a lot of corn going to Mexico for livestock feed, but not that much for human food. Uh, you're actually absolutely correct. You know, we are so blessed in this country that we can grow more corn than we consume domestically. So that means that exports are very important. And exports to Mexico are, are the Mexico's our number one importer for a variety of reasons. You know, we have the transportation system in place. Our railroads go from, from our fields here in the Midwest direct down to the cattle, pork, and chicken feeders in Mexico. So uh, very important to our industry and, and very important to, to the Mexican producers and, the, and consumers as well. And Wally said all corn growers will be pushing Congress to approve the Next Generation Fuels Act. You're absolutely right. The uh, Next Generation Fuels Act paves the way for higher blends. You know, we're selling more and more E15 right along, and, but we need higher blends. Uh, it also allows the car engine manufacturers to manufacture engines specifically designed for higher blends. Those small displacement, high compression, turbocharged engines that need the extra octane that is in higher blends. So uh, very important, Bill. Uh, we need all the tools in the toolbox here to decarbonize the transportation industry. So certainly electric vehicles are going to be one of those. But with ethanol's lower carbon intensity score than gasoline, the more ethanol we burn, the more we decarbonize the transportation system and we can do that right now. We know how to grow the feedstock corn, we know how to process it into the product ethanol, and we know how to distribute it. We've got our, our gas stations all set up. So yeah, it's a win-win. We need to do this.